creation, and then comes the fall, and then the flood, and then the nations, and then 4,000 years ago, in a place called Ur, which is near the Persian Gulf, which would text like salt, that reminds us of Sarah, Abraham, Lot, and Sarah, who go down the Tigris, and the Euphrates to a place called Haran, and that's where Tara dies. Now let's remember our map. We have the Sea of Galilee, the Jordan River, the Dead Sea, the Mediterranean, and then here would be Israel. Abraham had two sons, Ishmael and Isaac. Isaac had two sons, Esau and Jacob. Jacob had a son named Joseph, who ended up in Egypt, and then all the Jews went to Egypt for 400 years. And God sent a leader named Moses. And Moses said, let my people go. And Pharaoh said, no. God sent the ten plagues. You have the, the Passover. They cross the Red Sea. They go to Mount Sinai. That's where they get the law. The law tells them about the tabernacle filled with Levites and priests and also talks about the offerings and feasts. They started counting the faces and they came to Kadesh, an oasis. They sent 12 spies into Canaan, but they didn't come back with a good report. Ten of them didn't. So they became wanderers and then they died. And then it The Israelites wandered around and around in the desert. They often complained as they traveled. We want to go back to Egypt, they said. God gave them a special bread from heaven each day, which they called manna. The people soon became tired of manna bread. They complained, we want meat. Their complaints angered God. So God sent lots and lots of quail for them to eat. God told them that they would eat so much quail, it would come out of their noses and they would be sick of it. Later, they couldn't find water and complained. God told Moses to speak to a rock, and God would make water come out of it. But Moses yelled at the people for their complaining. Instead of obeying God, Moses struck the rock with his staff. Even though Moses disobeyed God, water still came out of the rock. But God told Moses that he would no longer enter the promised land of Canaan because of his sin. Again, the people complained about the manna bread. So God sent poisonous snakes among them. After being bit, they begged Moses to ask God to save them. God told Moses to make a snake out of bronze and put it up on a pole. Moses did what God said. Whoever looked at the bronze snake lived. God told Moses to send men to go and check out the land of Canaan. Canaan was the land God promised to give to Abraham, the father of the Israelites. Moses selected twelve men. He sent them to spy out what the land and the people there were like. The spies spent forty days checking out the land of Canaan, before returning to Moses. The spies said that the land was a good land, filled with milk and honey. The men showed the people fruit from the land of Canaan, a large cluster of grapes it took two men to carry. But ten of the spies gave a bad report about the land of Canaan. They said the people of Canaan were too powerful and would destroy the Israelites. After hearing the bad report, the people of Israel complained and wished to go back to Egypt. But Joshua and Caleb, the two other spies, told the people to trust in the Lord. God was strong enough to defeat the enemies of Canaan, they said. The people did not trust God. So God told Moses he would destroy them. But Moses asked God to forgive the people, and God did. Still, God told the people and the ten spies they could not go into the promised land of Canaan. Instead, they would wander around and around in the desert for 40 years. After 40 years, only Joshua and Caleb and the children would go into the Promised Land. Wilderness. As a result of their lack of faith, the people of Israel wander in the wilderness for another 40 years, but God was still with them. For the second time, 
the Israelites have come to the border of the Promised Land. This time, they are not afraid. Men talk of the flocks and herds they will have, and women dream of peaceful homes. But Moses' feelings are bittersweet. He calls the people together. I am 120 years old. I can no longer lead you, and God has already told me that I will not enter the Promised Land. So God has appointed a new leader. Joshua, come and stand before the assembly. The people cheer Moses' successor. Joshua has proven himself faithful to God and a brave leader. At that moment, the Lord speaks, confirming his choice of Joshua. Be strong and courageous, Joshua, for you will bring the Israelites into the land I promised them a land flowing with milk and honey, and I myself will be with you. Creation, then comes the fall, and then the flood, and then the nations, and then 4,000 years ago, in a place called Ur, which is near the Persian Gulf, which would taste like salt, that reminds us of Sarah, Abraham, Lot, and Terah, who go down the Tigris and the Euphrates to a place called Haran, and that's where Terah dies. Now let's remember our map. We have the Sea of Galilee, the Jordan River, the Dead Sea, the Mediterranean, and then here would be Israel. Abraham had two sons, Ishmael and Isaac. Isaac had two sons, Esau and Jacob. Jacob had a son named Joseph, who ended up in Egypt, and then all the Jews went to Egypt for 400 years. And God sent a leader named Moses. And Moses said, let my people go. And Pharaoh said, no. God sent the ten plagues. You have the, the Passover. They cross the Red Sea. They go to Mount Sinai. That's where they get the law. The law tells them about the tabernacle filled with Levites and priests and also talks about the offerings and feasts. They started counting the faces and they came to Kadesh, an oasis. They sent 12 spies into Canaan, but they didn't come back with a good report. Ten of them didn't. So they became wanderers and then they died. And then at a place